Welcome to If News. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a breaking story. The stories I have for you this week start with a rundown of the many cryptid creatures that are found in the Pacific Northwest. Mainstream news jumped aboard the cryptozoology bandwagon for a bit with a story from the Willamette Week. Second, in UFO news, a homeowner says a mystery object damaged his house and it didn't fall from a plane, according to the FAA. So, first up, a story, a fun story, out of Oregon that could raise more awareness to the field of cryptid studies and possibly inspire the next generation of cryptozoologists. The article is a little tongue-in-cheek and starts out by saying, Oregon is a frightening place. It goes on to say how the woods of the area are very remote, the waters are murky, and it is a dark and gloomy place most of the year. Traveling beyond Portland and the city limits, and you will find yourself in a true wilderness, and it could be anyone's guess as to what is lurking out there in the trees and bushes. It is said that the area is a hotbed for strange cryptid and paranormal activity. Everything from river serpents to flying werewolves and our old friend the Sasquatch, tales of cryptids and mysterious creatures yet to be confirmed by science have been part of Oregon's folklore for centuries. This inspired them to run a Halloween article, and this article is what could inspire the future generations of cryptid hunters. The idea was simple, provide a profile for each creature and a costume design for the kids to follow. The first cryptid was Colossal Claude, a river monster that was first reported by the crew of the Columbia light ship in 1934. Colossal Claude is a river monster that was spotted at the mouth of the Columbia River. According to the crew who witnessed the beast, the water serpent was around 40 feet in length with an 8-foot neck and a round body, a mean-looking tail, and an evil snaky look to its head. This may sound familiar as it kind of matches the river monster said to be in St. John's Jacksonville. This is an animal that I recently covered in another cryptid video. Not seen in the river since the 50s, another water-dwelling beast was supposedly caught on tape by Shell oil workers on an oil drilling expedition near Astoria in 1963. They dubbed it Marvin the Monster, although some insist it was none other than Claude himself. If you fancy dressing up as this beastie, you will need a spandex bodysuit, oven mitts, swim fins, a long cardboard tube to make the neck, and something I wouldn't recommend for a child's costume, a length of barbed wire for the tail. All this is then topped off with a snake mask. Next up is a creature that if you've been with the channel for some time, you may remember. Bat Squatch. The video on the flying squatch is linked above. First spotted in the 80s, flying over Mount St. Helens, the rarely seen winged humanoid is said to resemble a flying primate with leathery black wings that span up to 50 feet. In 1994, the Tacoma News Tribune detailed the story of a teenager who ran into Bat Squatch. He said that the monster had clawed feet, blue-tinted fur, the face of a wolf, and massive bat-like wings. Costume components are to get the right look for this one is a little simpler. Start with a Bigfoot costume, discard the head, replace it with a wolf mask, add bat wings, and if you're nimble enough, try walking on drywall stilts. The next cryptid is the Devil's Lake Monster. The Devil's Lake gained its name from local tribal legends that tell of an octopus-like monster living in the dark waters. Legend states that a Native American chief sent a group of his best warriors on a late-night hunting trip. Taking to the water, the warriors were ambushed without warning. Giant tentacles reached up from beneath the water, capsizing their canoe and dragging the men deep into the murky depths 
and their deaths. This is another simple dress-up, utilizing four red foam pool noodles, six pairs of red socks, and a sexy devil costume. Discard the sexy elements. The final cryptid creature is one that a few of you guys here on the channel are big fans of. Dogman Dogman, the canine version of Bigfoot, is a hairy creature with pointed ears like those of a German Shepherd and a long snout. It is said to stand at around 7 feet in height. Some have suggested that it's some sort of hellhound with its large burning red eyes and fang-like teeth. For this costume, Ryan, I know you are taking notes. You will need a Michael Myers mask and a dog. Slip the mask over the dog's head and you're away. Good luck with that. On to the next story, which has the Federal Aviation Administration saying a mysterious object which fell from the sky and damaged a Kentucky man's mobile home earlier in October did not come from an airplane. Billy Cobbin writes, Norfolk Southern Railway said that its nearby railway lines have nothing to do with a mysterious canister-type object that hit the home in Bergen, roughly 75 miles southeast of Louisville. So was it something that was dropped from a passing plane, possibly from local National Guard or the Fort Campbell military base? Or could it have been dropped by a UFO? Tommy Woosley is still wondering about the origin of the object that damaged a wall and part of his bathroom. Woolsey told the Courier Journal, "Seems to me that they should be able to trace the barcode on this thing to see where it came from." The man found the object laying in the wall of his home on October 13th. This after returning from a weekend out of town. Describing what he had found, Woolsey said it was some type of canister about 2 inches round and 10 inches long and extremely heavy for its size. Authorities initially believed that the canister may have fallen from an airplane, but an FAA spokeswoman told the Courier Journal that an investigation had determined that the object is not an aviation part. FAA spokeswoman Kathleen Bergen said that the agency reached out to Norfolk Southern to ask if it could have come from the railway line. The railroad company confirmed that the damage to Woolsey's home was not caused by a part of a Norfolk Southern engine. The FAA also checked with the National Guard and Fort Campbell, which is roughly 220 miles southeast of Bergen, and they indicated that the object wasn't theirs. So what do you think the object could be? It does have English written on it, so maybe we can exclude UFOs this time, but could it be some part of a secret project flying out of nearby Fort Campbell? There was a time when the world wasn't supposed to know anything about the elite Fort Campbell helicopter unit that helped the Navy SEALs take out Osama bin Laden. The Army refused to publicly acknowledge the existence of the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment Airborne for almost a decade after it was formed and began flying out of Fort Campbell. So could they be up to their old tricks? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If there is anything from the news that you would like to see me take a deeper dive into, just let me know. All links to this week's stories can be found in the video description. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit the red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.